this final video of our WordPress training series, we'll be discussing the settings panel. You might be thinking, all these other things I've been doing so far at the administration screens have involved settings. Are these settings any different? Well, yes, all the settings you've encountered in other administration screens have dealt with very specific parts of your site or have been of limited scope, only applying to one page, for example. In the settings administration screen, you'll have access to all of the settings which determine how your website behaves and how you and the rest of the world interact with your website. The general settings allow you to change your website's title, tag, and web address. In the public view, the title and the tagline appear in your website's header. The title also appears on your admin toolbar. You can also change the administrator email. This email is used by WordPress to send automated notifications such as new user registrations and new comment notices. You can choose whether or not your website can have open registration and a default role for these new members. If you decide to have open registration, I would recommend using subscriber as a default user role since subscribers cannot edit or publish content. Next, you can set your date format, your time format, and choose your week starting day. Remember to save any changes you made before moving on. The writing subpanel controls the edit window that allows you to create new posts and pages. You can set the size of the editing window. The sizes are based on lines. I find that 40 lines works best for me. Before I make this change, I want to show you the difference. I'm going to open the create new post page in a new window. As you can see, the input box is not that big and I definitely could use more space. If I go back to the settings page, and set the number of lines to 40 and save my changes, you will see that the box is now bigger. Feel free to change the number around until you find something that works for you. You can also set your formatting, assign a default category from the categories you currently have, the default post format, and the default link category. In this sub-panel, you can also add the press this bookmarklet to your bookmarks. As you might remember from the tools video, the Press This Bookmarklet allows you to quickly publish content that you find online. You can also post to your WordPress website via email. Simply enter your email account details here, and WordPress will periodically check for new emails sent to this account. The subject line of the email will become the post title, and the body of the email will become the content. Be sure that this is a secure email account because any email that is received at this account will become a new post on your website. WordPress even generates a random set of strings if you want to use them as your email address. You can also set the default category for posts that you publish via email. If you plan to post content from a desktop blogging application or a mobile WordPress app, then you need to enable the Atom and XML RPC publishing protocols. Lastly, you can choose to notify one or more update services each time you publish new content. The Reading subpanel contains options of how your content is displayed. You can set your front page, meaning the home page of your WordPress website. By default, your blog page is your home page, but you can change it to any other static page that you've created by selecting it from the drop down menu. You can then select which page you want your blog to appear in. If you don't want the blog, just leave the post page drop down menu alone. To show you how this works, I'll choose a page I created called Home for my front page and a page called blog for my post page. If I save my changes and head over to the home page of my website, you will see that my home page no longer contains my blog post articles. Instead, you will see my new home page. If I click on the blog page, which I've added to my custom navigation menu, you will see my post articles in the familiar blog format. You can also choose how many posts will appear per blog page and how many posts will appear in your RSS feed. For your RSS feed, you can choose to display the full text of the article or just a summary. This will require readers to visit your website to read the full article. The discussion subpanel, as you saw in an earlier video, controls the options for your comments and pinbacks. Allowing trackbacks means that a trackback link will be posted in the comments section of your post to websites that have linked to that particular article. You can set your comment email preferences, filter for moderation, or decide whether or not users can use avatars. The media subpanel allows you to set the default dimensions of the different sizes an uploaded image is converted to. As you sign the embedding video of this training series, you can enable auto embeds, which are an easy way to embed video into your site. And you can set the maximum width and height of the embedded video. 
And lastly, you can set where your uploaded files are stored and whether or not you want to organize them by month and year. The Privacy subpanel simply determines whether your website can be found by search engines like Google, Yahoo, or Bing. Or you can block them all so no one can find you through search engines. The Permalink settings simply determine the URL format of your pages and posts. By default, WordPress uses a question mark and an ID number as the URL, but you have the option to use more friendly URLs to make them more optimized for search engines and make them easy to remember for your users. One format that most internet marketers and SEO experts agree on is to use postname by itself. The custom structure field allows you to enter the format in which you want WordPress to create the URL for your post. To change the permalink to postname, you can click on this option or type backslash percentage sign postname percentage sign backslash in the custom structure field. WordPress also gives you the option to change the category based slug in the tag based slug. These are the slugs of the individual category and tag pages. By default, WordPress uses the word category as the slug for category pages. In the example given by WordPress, you can see that if you change the category base to topics, your URL to the uncategorized category page will read your website's URL followed by backslash topics backslash uncategorized, replacing the word category with the word topics. And that is all. We've now gone through all the major functions and features in the WordPress administration. By now, you should be able to create and edit your website's content with no problem. This wraps up MarketingUnfolded.com's WordPress training series. For more training videos and other useful content, feel free to check out my website at MarketingUnfolded.com. Also, if you haven't already, sign up for my newsletter to receive more free, valuable content as it comes out. And don't forget to add me on Facebook. Thanks for watching this training series, and I'll talk to you guys again soon. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. <music>